Have you gotten your arms around artificial intelligence for HR? I know my hands haven't even touched each other yet. Our guest today will take us up the learning curve of this critical new technology. Welcome to Firing Line. I'm Jason Averbrook, standing in for Bill Kudyk. Tony Stedman is the America's Transformation Leader for People Advisory Services at EY, the consulting and accounting firm formerly known as Ernst & Young. And he's made consulting on AI one of his specialties as the latest enabling technology for HR. Hello, Tony. Glad you could be here. Good to be with you. So in the world of enabling technologies, AI, and specifically RPA, is being talked about a ton, but a lot of misinformation out there. Can you talk to us a little about what it is and what it means? Sure. Um, actually, hidden within your question is uh, one of the misconceptions. A lot of people think that AI is a thing, but it's actually a, a suite of applications or a suite of tools, RPA being the most prevalent mm -hmm. tool that's in use right now. I would say RPA is a software package that really emulates human processing. Uh, it could be used to move information from one application to the other application. It could be used to move information from a spreadsheet. Okay. Very easy to implement, very easy to maintain. So there's a lot of organizations out there that just see this as swivel chair automation between mm -hmm. one screen to the other. You know, where can you share where adoption's really in play here? I, I think most of the adoption today is really around those activities that are processing, uh, mostly in the payroll area. Okay. Uh, people are looking at uh, RPA to identify processing errors. Also in talent acquisition, to move information from, let's say, a CRM application into applicant tracking and then onto the onboarding module. I do think in the future, there'll be a lot more robust uses of RPA, probably in learning and development. You can see a use case for uh, uh, going from a performance management process and then drawing a learning plan uh, using, uh, using robotics in that instance. Okay, so how fast are you seeing adoption? Actually, you know, if you, if you asked me that question about five years ago, I would say a handful of clients were even talking about RPA, okay. but today, uh, of the dozen or so clients that I talk to specifically and the hundreds of clients that we work with directly as a firm, every one of them are either doing proof of concepts, multiple, or they actually have bots in production. So it's much faster than you thought it was going Absolutely to be. much faster. So when you think about RPA, what are some of the biggest mistakes that organizations make as they enter this new world? I think the biggest mistake is thinking of uh, AI or RPA as a IT issue. Okay. It's not. It is really a business issue and a business capability. Um, I think right behind that is using RPA before they've done the process automation and leaning out the applications that are currently in use. Okay. And last but not least, not really understanding the implications of implementing RPA onto the organizational structure. What does it really mean for the capabilities that people need to have and the role of a manager? So change management's an issue, but what else? What else can organizations be doing to get better at RPA? You know, I, I really think there are really three things organizations can, can do to get better at RPA. First and foremost, when, when they're going into an assessment phase, they really need to do the due diligence around education making sure the organization understands RPA, understands the use cases, and, and really assesses where those use cases can be, uh, uh, be optimized. Secondarily, make sure you do your process work. There, it does you no good to implement RPA on a bad process. And last but not least, I would say make sure you have proper program management methodology in place. Don't care if it's lean or Six Sigma or PMI, but make sure you actually have that implemented. Wow, so a lot of things, a lot of things to make this work. I, I would say so. Yeah, yes. well Tony, it's been great to have you here. I've known you for a long time. It's fun to have you here talking about RPA and AI, sort of the next frontier Absolutely. as to where this whole space is going. Fun to be with you and good to see you, Jason. You too. Don't miss next month's episode of Firing Line. Just click on the red subscribe box at the end. You'll get just one email notice and when the next program is posted. Write your comments on this YouTube page, on our Facebook page, or send us an old-fashioned email to bill at cutic.com. We want to know what you're thinking. I'm Jason Averbrook. Thank you for watching.